Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to actually implement the credit card class. So, this is our skeleton. We are going to make it a public class credit card. And we have we should have three private instance variables representing the number, name, and the balance. So, we are going to have private int card num private string name and private double balance some points to note here are that these are instance variables you don't initialize them in uh, here you are going to initialize them in the constructor only and it is a better programming practice to make them all private so that accidentally if uh, our client is using is using our credit card class he does not try to change all of these and a card number can be an int or if you want to be more specific you can make it a long log or any other data type and that balance it has to be a double because money can be stored in cents also so we have made up three instance variables now we have we are going to make first the constructor it will accept the name na number name and balance and if the number is not valid the balance will be zero irrespective of the parameter provided so now the public credit card with the parameter as a string n and an int num and a double amount and in here we are going to assign name is equal to n and card num is equal to num so this card num and name will get the value whatever this n and num are and now for the balance later we are going to implement this uh, card number checker method also which will return true or false so we can do this here if card number checker and we'll to that function we are going to give the parameter num if and if that happens to be true that means that the card number is valid then balance is going to be equal to the amount else that same balance is going to be zero and we have finished our constructor moving on to the next part now we will implement the reduce balance method so it is going to return a true or false and it has to have a parameter probably a double so here is its signature public boolean reduce balance and it will take as a parameter the double amount and uh, it is a public method anyone can have anyone should have access to it and it should be a public method and it's here we have written boolean because it is going to return a true or a false in that what we have to do is that we have to reduce the balance only if after reducing the balance uh, the balance would not go into negative so if balance minus amt balance minus the amount if that happens to be greater than or equal to zero only in that case we are going to do balance minus equals amount else we are going to just return false and finally if, if uh, our balance minus amount had executed true we are going to return true after it escapes this if statement so let's see what's happening here if we get an amount we had a balance here let that be 40 dollars and we get an amount say 30 dollars so balance minus amount if it's greater than zero 
that means we can take that much amount from our balance it is going to reduce the balance and it would return it is going to return true else if balance minus a pound happens to be a negative value it will just straight away return false and do nothing to the balance and we have implemented this method also going over to the next one and now we will be implementing the two string method and if you see it is quite simple it is a public string to string and we are going to do it that in one statement it is going to return the name plus some space plus the card num the no, card number plus again some space but now with a dollar sign and plus balance so what this plus does it is the concatenation operator it is going to combine all these separate parts of string into one single string and that is going to be returned by the two string function so it will take the name add a little space add cardum add a little space then the dollar and then the balance it is going to look something like this like we'll show the name name has been shown now a space next the card num whatever it happens to be now a space and a dollar sign and now the balance whatever it happens to be so this is how it is going to be returned so we have implemented this also going over to the next one it is the card number checker our main focus here on this class we are going to implement the learns algorithm in this only so it is going to return a boolean and is going to accept the credit card number as public boolean card number checker and int in just a single parameter and we are good to go so let us first uh, separate all the digits into into an array so that it is easier to work upon so we can make an array of integer call it digits and let that be equal to a new array of length 11 now now here we are actually going to separate the digits and let int we are going to set a counter because we are using a while loop if you prefer you can go for a for loop also but a while loop is generally easier for this type of problem so while r that argument n is going to be greater than zero we are going to do a couple of things so digit the counter whatever the counter is so when it is starting well digits whatever the counter is if the counter is zero first thing will happen is going to the digit zero now what that digit zero has to be equal to it has to be equal to n percent 10 so let uh, this will boxes be our array so this percent n it will be going to be three and we are going to store that three in our first box of the digits array it does not matter if we store the digits in the array in a specific order like we can store it like 3, 2, 7, 7 here and that's exactly what we are doing. All that we have to remember is that every second digit has to be doubled and its digits has to be added and so if that's okay then everything is going to work out. So here when this loop will be starting the digits 0, the first box in the array will get the last last uh, digit of our credit card number and after that we are going to make counter get incremented by one and n will become will become divided by 10 well this statement is actually nothing just this n divided by 10 and so notice here this is integer division do not make it like this it will actually ruin everything so we make sure that this is integer division and in that case like we have this credit card number divided by 10 it would just strip this three digit out and whatever we have let will be this this three nine nine two seven three nine eight seven one 
and now again this loop will start this one is going to be stored in a separate box in an array and then this one is going to be stripped out of then the seven will be stored in a separate box stripped out and like that we are going to iterate over the array and it will it will keep going to happen unless uh, n becomes zero or less than zero and actually it will become zero or only and in that case the loop will stop and by that time our digits array will be full of all the digits so now we can actually do the calculations we have our digits so using a for loop for and i is equal to one actually here we are doubling every second digit so it is not necessary to start at the first one we will start at this one only we'll go till i is going to be less than well we have to go from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 i is less than or equal to 10 or you can make that less than 11 also and we are going to do i plus equals 2 that means first will be at 1 and 2 3 then 4 5 then 6 7 then 8 9 next will be 10 11 but in that case our loop will terminate so we are going to double every second digit so digits the ith digit is going to be multiplied by 2 of itself now if that happens to be greater than 9 if that's doubled digit becomes of uh, like two digits like 18 or 16 then we are first going to check if digits that ith digit is greater than 9 is greater than 9 then we are going to have to take a sum of the digits but look it can be done more easily than to again strip out of two digits and then add them notice here every digit can be from 1 to 9 only and maximum it can be 9 and the double of 9 it's 18 so in no case after doubling every other digit it is going to be greater than 18 it is always going to be less than or equal to 18 so 18 sum of digits is 9 16 sum of digits 7 believe the sum of digits is actually the number which is 9 minus which is 9 digits behind the number that is 18 minus 9 gives 9 well 9 is the sum of 8 and 1 16 minus 9 gives us 7 and 6 plus 1 is actually 7 so we can do that here digits i f will go back 9 9 will be subtracted from it if it is happens to be greater than 9 and now we have doubled every second digit after that finally we are going to check it so first we need to find the sum actually we are not going to check it we are going to find the sum before so and sum is equal to zero actually and sum is equal to zero then for we are going to iterate over every element of the array digits notice here this length is actually a variable of that array it is not a method that we are going to that we would have to do this no it is actually a variable in that implementation of the array so no brackets and i plus plus so all that sum plus equals digits i now we are going to return if that sum percent 10 is equal to 0 you can do that also with an if statement that if sum percent 10 is equal to 0 return true as return false but this is more concise and it is in a single statement if sum model is 10 that is sum is like 20 or 30 this is going to be equal to 0 so 0 equal to 0 that's going to be true and so return true if it is like 15 or 14 or 4 then 4 is not equal to 0 and it will return false and we have completed our credit card class thank you